Hi, my name is Lorena. I'm a spiritual life coach and a breathwork teacher, and I'm primarily focused on Neville Goddard's teachings. And I'm here to help you shift your state of being and recreate your reality. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, check out the description box below. If you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. Then you'll get weekly videos from me all about self-concept, self-love, manifestation, all that good stuff. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between hope and faith and how both of them relate to conscious creation and manifestation. This is closely linked to last week's video. So if you haven't seen that yet, check that out. I'm going to link it below. That was all about living in the end and how to enter the state of the wish fulfilled. So let's define both hope and faith to start off with. So hope is sort of an optimism for the future. You are wishing for something to happen, you are hoping for it to work out, and you're seeing it as a possibility, as something that could unfold. So you're optimistic about it, you're positive about it. Faith is different. Faith comes with a confidence. It's a knowing with absolute 100% certainty that what you want will work out so much that internally you're not even putting it into the future it's present reality for you because you know it so deeply you believe it so deeply and despite all that and despite the title of this video hope is not a bad thing it's not a negative thing because there is a certain optimism that comes with hoping for something right you're not in complete disbelief you do see it as a possibility or as potential but it can also work against you and that's what i want to explore a bit more with you now there are a few problems with hope versus faith first of all because you're putting it into the future rather than feeling it as true in the present, you're staying in an energy of wanting, waiting, or wishing, which is not the energy you manifest from. It's not the state you're manifesting from. If you're in a state of waiting, you're going to get more waiting. If you're in a state of wanting, you're going to get more wanting. With faith, it's already done. You're not wanting or wishing or waiting for anything anymore. You feel it with such certainty as if it was here now. So all the worry, all the doubt, goes away. So essentially hope is also a maybe, whereas faith is a 100% yes. No other option, no plan B, as I like to say. And the other thing is that hope really externalizes your power because you don't feel like you're in control of your beliefs, like you're in control of your state, like you're in control of your reality. When you're hoping you're giving your power away. Whereas when you know that you are God, you are a consciousness, you are source, you are the operant power, you have faith. All the power is internal and not external. The issue with hope is that it keeps you in separation. It keeps you away from your desire by putting it into a potential future and by looking at it from a place of, I don't have this. You feel separate from your desire instead of embodying the state where it's already done. When you hope versus having faith versus believing, you're also more likely to look for proof because you don't trust. You don't trust that it's done. You're not confident. You might not trust in yourself. You might not trust in the law or in God. Looking for proof implies that there's a lot of worry and doubt that it might not work out. So essentially you're not going all in. When you have faith, you don't need proof. Because even if you don't see any proof outside of yourself, you believe anyway, you know anyway, you trust anyway. When you hope, you are resisting your current circumstances. And that kind of makes you feel stuck because you hate where you are and equally you don't have full confidence that that's not going to stay. So it kind of keeps you in limbo. And it might even feel painful because you're wishing for things to be different so badly, even if you have a positive outlook through hoping for something better in the future. But when you have faith, then there is no resistance. You can surrender fully. You don't worry about what's happening outside of you. The biggest issue I actually see with hope is sort of like an ego attachment, like a self-concept or identity issue, because what's happening when you're in hope is you're not satisfied where you are and you're also not believing fully with confidence that it can change or that it will change, then on some level, be that consciously or unconsciously, you stay in a comfort zone. This is the limbo I was speaking about. You stay stuck. 
you're not going forward and you're also not rejecting it. You're also not going back. It's like you're being in the comfort zone of being in pain, of not having, but also not wanting it to not happen or accepting that it might not happen. You're not going in, you're not going out. You're not fully believing, you're also not fully accepting disbelief. So the identity issue here is that you're staying in hope because on some level, you don't actually know who you would be without the problem. Let that sink in and ask yourself the question, if this is you, if you don't fully believe, if you don't have full confidence, full faith, but you're hoping, if you're staying attached to the problem, because otherwise you don't really know who you would be. This is a big one. If you preserve hope for something without actually trusting that it will happen, you never allow yourself to fully go for it because the fear of failure is so strong. So you never allow yourself to actually be vulnerable and open yourself up to the possibility fully. There is a risk for your ego. There's a risk of failure. But without risking that, there is no potential for you to actually experience what you want because you're holding yourself back from it. The reason you may stay in hope and be so resistant to risking failure, and failure is a whole other topic, which we will talk about another time because it's another big topic, is because when you think you fail, you will have to accept a reality that you don't want to accept. That reality being, it hasn't worked out. Then it's over in your mind. So it's more comfortable to not go all in and to stay in this could happen, maybe it will, hopefully in the future, than to go all in and potentially it not working out or rejecting it from the start. So then you're in the comfort zone of hoping and trying to manifest, you're in complete limbo, not going forward, not going backwards, nothing is ever changing. If you stay in hope, nothing will change. If you're one of those people who say, I am trying to manifest blah, blah, blah. If you use the word trying, you know you're not living in the end. You're hoping for things to change. You're waiting for things to change rather than taking control of your state of being yourself. So when you're hoping, there may not be any potential for failure or loss. But unfortunately, it also doesn't get you what you want because you're staying in a state of wishing, waiting, wanting. This is all very similar to the idea or the distinction between thinking of the end and thinking from the end, which Neville Goddard speaks about, which is something that I addressed in my last video about how to live in the end result, how to live from the state of the wish fulfilled, despite all the negative connotations I just pointed out with the concept of hope. If you are realizing after everything that I said right now that you are actually in hope and not having faith, if you're actually wishing or awaiting or wanting instead of living from the end result, then let me reassure you a little bit because as I said, hope is not all negative. Hope is actually like a bridge to faith. Hope can be a step before faith. Although hope doesn't actually get you what you want, the difference between hope and faith or the path from hope to faith is actually minor. Because if you can have hope, then you believe in the possibility. And if you believe in the possibility, then you can shift to having full confidence. Then you can choose to trust, then you can choose to have faith. How? <laughs> With practice. With questioning persistently all the beliefs that go against your desire, with using your imagination, feeling the reality of your desire being here now, with practicing entering and living from the wish fulfilled. And I also want to point out, because I don't want this to hold you back either, full faith and full belief is not 100% necessary to manifest. Sometimes it can just be enough to see it as a possibility and release the resistance around the current circumstances, release the resistance around it may not happen. Watch my video on surrendering and releasing resistance for more input on this. But of course, with full faith, you eliminate all doubt and thereby you eliminate all resistance and it happens a lot more easily. And the reason I find this distinction between hope and faith so important to talk about, so important to point out, is because of the state of limbo that you may stay in if you're not making any changes, if you're staying in your comfort zone. If you have faith, there is no way what you want will not happen.
I would love to know your thoughts about hope versus faith. So leave me a comment below. Also, as always, let me know what else you want me to talk about. I'm always happy to hear your opinions and get inspired by you. I will also link all the videos that are related to this topic below in the description box, just in case you haven't seen them yet. And I'm sending you so much love. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time when we will talk about self-love and self-concept, my favorite topics.